We recently produced a special episode of Muscle Car of the Week where we spotlighted some of the cool things that make Mopar muscle cars so cool. And as expected, we got a lot of feedback from different viewers who posted comments, not only in support of the Mopar episode, but a lot of people said, well, hey man, what about Chevrolet? What about Pontiac? What about Ford? So we took those notes, and today we're doing a You Asked For It episode of cool elements from Chevrolet muscle cars spotlighted here in this special episode. We're gonna start this special off by looking at something that is pretty iconic in the world of Chevrolet performance, the cowl induction hood. Although we associate cold air from coming in in the front of the car, the cowl induction hood is a brilliant design that pulls cool air from the base of the windshield area in through a scoop down into the engine. There's always a fresh supply of cool air at the base of the windshield, and they call this air undisturbed, so it's easy to draw in and make more power. Next, we're gonna go from the front of the car all the way to the back and spotlight the Chevrolet 12-bolt rear axle assembly. The Chevrolet 12-bolt rear end is easily identifiable by the 12 bolts that hold the cover to the back of the housing. But the real reason to have one of these is not because it's got a lot of bolts, because it's got a lot of strength. These came in a variety of gear ratios with limited slip options, so when you put the hammer down, both tires would hit and you're off to the races. Chevrolet performance cars came with a lot of different high performance engines, but in this episode, we're gonna take a moment to spotlight the infamous Chevrolet 409. There's a reason why the Beach Boys called the 409 real fine, and that's because these engines were very innovative and they made a lot of power. They started off as a smaller displacement truck engine, but when you increased the size and took advantage of that splayed valve configuration, that interesting looking W-head 409 V8 made Chevrolet cars come to life. That 409 engine lived under the hood, and a lot of times those hoods are painted with SS stripes. So next up, let's take a look at the instantly recognizable Chevrolet SS stripe package. Today, stripes like these SS stripes seem so popular, it's kind of hard to imagine Chevelles and Camaros without them, but there was a time. The SS stripe starts on the hood and lands on the rear deck, and it's two larger stripes surrounded by smaller pinstripes and are a signature design of Chevrolet Performance. Wheels add obvious functionality, but they can also bring style, and Chevrolet hit a home run with the rally wheel. Back in the 60s, there was no such thing as a billet aluminum or alloy lightweight racing wheel. So the OEs did what they could by cutting some weight out of the stamped steel wheels and increasing the style with little windows. In some ways, this also helped with removing heat from the brakes and they added unmistakable style to Chevelles, Corvettes, Camaros, Impalas, and all high performance Chevys of the 60s. One of the hottest performance engines of all time is the Code LS6 454 cubic inch engine making 450 horsepower. This thing found its way into Chevelles and also Corvettes and is long regarded as one of the hottest V8 engines ever. You can see more of this one in episode number 182 of Muscle Car of the Week. Chevrolet realized in the 60s that one way to make their performance car stand out was to give them a special name. So they came up with the Super Sport. Chevrolet was looking to further distinguish certain models of Chevrolet Impalas in the early 60s. Although the Impala is normally a very stylish car, they came up with an option called the Super Sport, which added even more style to the car. Super Sports traditionally had different trim, wheel covers, interior accents, and eventually higher performance options. It's interesting to note that the Super Sport was really an appearance package all the way through the late 1960s. 
Next up, we're looking at a performance program which turned into some performance cars. And we're talking about the COPO program or the central office production order. And this was unique because the central office was a division in Chevrolet where people could order custom vehicles, but mostly fleet vehicles, right? So if you needed a whole parking lot full of white vans, you could order those specially through the central office. Well, some very smart people realized you could also use that central office to hand select high performance parts to outfit a Camaro or a Chevelle. And they came up with what are known as the Copo cars. In this case, this green 69 Camaro features a 427 cubic inch engine, factory installed, but again, never officially offered by Chevrolet. That's part of the mystery of the Copo cars and why they're so collectible today. Now certain engines have become legendary just by the name of the code. And this next one is certainly one of them. We're gonna take a look at the RPO code L88 for the 427 Corvette. The L88 Corvettes are very special cars. They're underrated on their power levels as many dyno facilities proved these things turned out more power than were factory rated and were the closest thing to a race car Chevrolet would sell to the public. You can see more of this car in episode number 117 of Muscle Car of the Week. I think it's important to point out that not all legends are big blocks and some are engines and the cars that they were found in. This next one is the RPO code Z28. It stands for the road racing Trans Am street version of the 1969 Camaro in this case, powered by the DZ302 high revving small block V8 engine installed in one heck of a car. The Z28 Camaro option is a great package of performance parts, style, and power. And when you apply all three, you end up with a legendary car. It all harkens back to the rules of Trans Am racing, where you had to have a street version of the race car, and Chevrolet put as many performance features into the street version as possible, making the 69 Z28 a legit road and track performer. Well, we hope you liked our look at some of the elements that make high-performance Chevrolets high-performance Chevrolets. We obviously couldn't hit on all of the cool elements, uh, but, What's your favorite brand of car? Maybe if you leave us a comment about the next one we should do in this series of spotlighting cool elements, we might feature your idea. And we will see you next time with another cool car from the Brothers Collection.